Great. Thank you so much uh, to the FIDO Alliance for having me once again. I'm Francis Elasny, co-founder and CEO of Anonabit. Um, for those who do not know me, I've been in the biometrics and identity space for quite some time. I've been on the journey of um, promoting um, biometrics and identification technologies in all different um, capacities. And I've been very excited and intrigued um, by uh, FIDO's uh, original introduction into the market and where we are today. Um, my presentation today is going to talk about the promise of FIDO in a mass market um, capacity. And um, before we, we go there, um, just wanted to level set in terms of where we are um, today, because obviously we're in a very, very exciting point um, with FIDO. There's been a tremendous, tremendous adoption. So kudos to Andrew and uh, the whole team for the vision. Um, we've seen just, you know, in the last week, uh, issues, which we'll get into in a minute. Um, and I think the promise of FIDO is still there. Um, the promise exists. It's a strong promise, um, leveraging personal devices, which are in the hands of overwhelming majority of the world's population. Um, tons of uh, members involvement um, by all levels of stakeholders. And but I think it's important to note that despite all of the progress, and I think even um, the board here at FIDO will uh, agree that most of the implementations are enterprise oriented. And there have been a number of opportunities and uh, challenges to bring FIDO to the masses, to the consumer um, arena. So the question to ask is, um, given all of the challenges and given where we are, despite all the progress, are we living a false promise for eliminating passwords at a mass scale? And that's where I wanna to touch on today. So our starting point is where, where, where are consumers sitting? Um, what, what are the challenges from a consumer point of view? And I think it starts with two, two main things. So one is um, proliferation, proliferation of data. Um, giant honey pots, which are pretty much impossible to protect. We've read in the news just the last few days about the Uber breach, which um, most of us probably will never know the exact truth of what happened, but there are definitely some very apparent uh, things that were exposed and that speak to what's on this slide. So first of all, that these um, systems, accounts, um, apps, are very, very hard to protect. Um, data breaches are uh, pretty much a daily occurrence. And the other thing that we know is that stolen data, stolen credentials are used for account takeover. And, um, and this is a huge business for, for organizations, uh, sorry, for, for the underworld, for the dark web. And it also has a huge impact on organizations' bottom line. The losses are simply uh, staggering and continuous. And um, the uh, one of the reasons that I say a false promise is that despite the movement to pass with this authentication, there are still enormous backdoors that involve pins and passwords and the stolen data that, that is used to impersonate people. And so um, this is something that really needs to be paid attention to. And I always ask the question, why is this happening? What are the real challenges in moving forward? So even if you have FIDO on the front end, what is going on with system design that still makes, um, makes, this, a, makes this hard to, to implement? So first of all, uh, and I'm thinking, and I'm, I'm focusing a lot on the account uh, recovery account takeover process, which is um, really the top vector of fraud. It's not necessarily the front end um, authentication. And it boils down to these four things. To get real security, there's always a trade-off between friction, cost, and consumer convenience. So if you really wanted to lock down an organization, you would essentially have um, people calling call centers on standby, making sure and figuring out um, with a number of steps who people are 
and be able to spend the time to vet them. But obviously that's not realistic. From a system design standpoint, identity management, whether you look at FIDO or not, um, identity management is a complicated endeavor. Um, when you issue FIDO credentials, who you issue them to? How do you manage them? Um, even the development of pass keys, which we'll talk about, still opens up um, questions on data management, where the pass key is actually stored, and so on and so forth. Um, another important observation is that organizations tend to be siloed and make siloed purchase decisions. So the people that are responsible for onboarding, and I'm going to talk more from the consumer perspective, but organizations and departments that are responsible for digital onboarding are not necessarily the ones that are focusing on FIDO implementations and um, are very likely not the ones that are focused on um, account recovery and password resets and things like this or, or account resets. And these organizational structures tend to open up um, other risks for the organization. And at the end of the day, we're back to the trade-off between friction, cost, privacy, uh, convenience, and security. I'm gonna now drill down into each of these uh, points. So first of all, to get real security, there's enormous uh, friction um, and cost. We know that password reset costs are very high. Um, some analysts have pointed to $70 per call to the call center and 30% of call center calls have to do with account recovery and password reset. Um, we're talking to customers that cannot actually rely on a device because their audience has shared devices. So that's a big challenge in the consumer world where you might have shared devices, you might have shared kiosks, think of retail applications or ATM applications or, or whatnot. And this again is, is the main attack vector for account takeover. From a validation standpoint, um, the uh, onboarding process takes an enormous amount of time. We see in um, e-commerce that even if there is a built-in um, authenticator for very high-end transactions, um, those are not relied on. And then it kicks back to some uh, very uh, high-end a video call or in, uh, back to a digital onboarding process, which can take anywhere from five to 30 minutes which is obviously very, very disruptive. And as I mentioned before, the back doors remain. So most passwordless authentications still have some other weak authenticator as a backup, and this is the backup that, that attackers exploit. The second point that I touched on was complication of system design, um, data protection. Um, even if you have a FIDO and uh, passwordless authentication systems, organizations that are dealing with sensitive information and potential fraud situations still have enormous amount of responsibility for personal data protection. That actually doesn't go away. Um, and the onus for data protection continues to be on the enterprise. And related to that, users may want to have control, but enterprises need that personal data in order to deliver services. So I, I like to, um, you know, I, I, I'm in awe of the progress around verifiable credentials and, di and digital credentials. But at the end of the day, most of you in the audience still need to hold on to personal data to make sure that you're managing accounts properly, delivering services properly, and so on and so forth. And even if you rely on a verifiable credential to um, onboard someone, you would still need to manage a lot of their other personal uh, information to service them properly. And so that doesn't go away too completely as well. And um, biometrics, despite all the progress, um, are still very much um, understood by everyone. Um, what exactly is happening on the device? What exactly is stored on the device? How do you know who's actually behind the device? How do you enroll the, How do you enroll uh, devices and make sure that the, those are the right the right people behind the device? And there's been a lot of uh, questions on whether if you deploy and you decide that you are going to deploy biometrics to the masses, whether people would actually opt in and whether this is something you can, you can actually count on. And the fact is that um, acceptance rates are very high, 
when you deliver a value. Um, on the other hand, um, if we are going to be using biometrics even uh, from the device, we can all expect, knowing the way attackers operate, that they will start to attempt to exploit the biometric uh, template in some way, shape, or form, whether directly through an injection attack or so on and so forth. And so the data protection around the biometrics needs to be um, taken more and more uh, seriously into consideration uh, beyond, again, what is actually happening on the device. The third point that I started to make is that organizations and purchase decisions related to um, identity management are siloed. The fact is, and I think I touched on it briefly before, the entities that are responsible for digital onboarding um, are not necessarily involved with device issuance, device binding, and so on, so on and so forth. And they may not be the ones that are focused on the orchestration platforms and the login authentication me mechanisms. Um, and um, certainly with uh, account recovery and step up authentication, those processes are actually um, broken. And so um, I see a lot of the progress around FIDO over here, but I also see that there's a disconnect between uh, the digital onboarding and the device binding. Um, what is the use of the FIDO authenticator? And then the step up uh, recovery process. And I think that this is something that needs to be thought of. And I closed my last, uh, th that first slide with, you know, this is where we end up is this trade off between privacy, security, uh, and convenience. Before we move on to more solutioning, let's touch a little bit on passkeys because that's been a very, very exciting um, development. Obviously, uh, Apple, um, Google, and Microsoft are um, putting uh, a lot of um, emphasis on fostering adoption of FIDO and getting rid of passwords, which is music to my ears for consumer applications, really focusing on the multi-device sharing of credentials, which has been a challenge from a usability perspective, right? How to allow FIDO credentials from any device or across devices. Um, so from a usability standpoint, from a convenience standpoint, I think that um, this has solved a huge, uh, a huge challenge um, for consumers. But on the other hand, there are, um, there are other challenges that can't be uh, escaped, right? So if the FIDO credentials are now protected by the cloud providers, right, because the pass keys are stored inside the cloud providers uh, storage mechanisms, then where do you think attackers are gonna go, right? They're gonna go to the uh, dark web and buy these account credentials into that that are, that are available. Um, and, they are uh, available, and I'm very happy to talk to anybody uh, offline and and, uh, and talk about this in greater detail. Um, and the uh, because SIM swaps are exploding, how you um, connect credentials across devices also becomes a bit of a of a problem because you have the um, the cha all of the other challenges around consumers from an enterprise point of view. Um, it's not a one size fits all. You need to think about all of the different use cases and all of the different channels that might be um, that might be used. So physical, digital, and call center channel. This um, holistic strategy, I think, is something that still still needs to be developed. And I'm I'm definitely excited to see where the world of pass keys um, are going to go. Um, so if I look at um, what does this all mean in terms of taking FIDO to the masses, leveraging all of this, all of this, um, all of these developments um, in the context of consumers? I think about these six uh, lessons learned um, from very large scale deployments like IDME and the IRS, which had its uh, problems, um, workforce implementations and other large deployments across many, many different um, environments like retail or travel or banking um, and commerce. And um, there are 
key, I think, elements that, that need to be considered. So number one is um, there are differences between the consumer and workforce in terms of what is acceptable around friction, the diversity of the audience that you're trying to serve. So some may have personal devices, some may not, some may be older, some may be younger, some may be pro-biometrics, some may be uncomfortable with biometrics, so on and so forth. I think it's important to understand that biometrics are not foolproof. And the fact that they're not foolproof and you will have uh, false accepts or false rejects means that you need a backup mechanism no matter what. So what is that backup? backup mechanism and how do you make sure that that backup mechanism doesn't provide a back door for attackers because that's where they're going to go, which leads me to my third point that hackers do not stand still. They're going to figure out how to somehow um, find the weakest link. They do not stand still. And um, so that needs to, we need to think like one step ahead. Um, communication. So how do you communicate to those people that may or may not be uncomfortable with with uh, biometrics on a device um, that may not know what to do, that may not understand what is actually happening. Um, how do you connect um, onboarding and identity verification mechanisms to fight? Uh, those are just the first step in, in identity schemes, but obviously, Vital cannot stand alone, and the onboarding cannot stand alone. So in order to really make this holistic, how do you connect that? And um, I touched on this a little bit, but even if there is a, um, a mechanism for authentication via the device or the use of a verifiable credential or whatnot, there's still tons and tons of personal data that still have to be protected by an enterprise. And we need to make sure that that data is not being ex potentially exposed or breached because that's what attackers are going to use to try to circumvent the FIDO process. And so just quickly, this is, uh, as you might imagine, this is essentially what we're focused on here at Anonymous. We, we have um, two main areas of focus. One is protecting data through a decentralized data vault where we break up uh, PII in such a manner that there's no more central honeypot. And the second thing is how do we leverage um, biometrics in a cloud-based pass with this uh, authentication mechanism to uh, secure interaction and connect the, the different parts of the uh, what, I, what I call the uh, circle of identity. And the way we do it, I don't want to really uh, get into, into too much of the technicalities here. We can um, discuss that another time, but essentially we're leveraging uh, multi-party computing and zero knowledge proofs in order to provide a lot of the backup mechanisms in a secure way. Um, in addition to uh, leveraging the biometric on the device in a FIDO, uh, FIDO standardized, FIDO certified uh, manner. And um, really excited to uh, be joining the FIDO family officially in, the anonymous, in my anonymous um, capacity as our solution moves towards the official um, certification. So we're actually excited about that and, and the combination of leveraging our decentralized cloud with the device-based um, biometrics in order to close the circle of identity that, are, that, are, that uh, attract uh, attackers. So via the anonymous decentralized cloud, what we're doing is we are uh, connecting digital onboarding to device binding, the uh, login authentication and the step-up uh, authentication process. We're actually combining um, FIDO device-based biometrics with a biometric decentralized cloud backup in order to have um, the means to identify people, even if they have a new device, even if they want to do a step up uh, recovery process or whatnot without introducing the risk and the friction that traditional processes um, exploit. So with that, I thank you for your time and I uh, welcome any questions um, through, the, through the portal. Thank you very much.